My, uh, my middle child is an actuarial major. And when we first went down to a school to meet the chair of the department, he told me, he asked me if I knew the difference between an actuary and a CPA. And I said, actually, no, I don't. And he said, well, an actuary looks at their shoes while they're talking to you. Uh, a CPA looks at your shoes while they're talking to you. Uh, I promise you, if you talk to me afterwards, I won't look at your shoes. I'll look you in the eye. Uh, I, am, I am a CPA, but I'm a business person first and foremost who uh, has a lot of passion around accounting and numbers and, and making it useful. Um, I'm one of those serial entrepreneurs that, uh, that Patrick mentioned. I grew up in an entrepreneurial family in Chicago. At one point, we had the largest market share of the school picture market in the city of Chicago until uh, LifeTouch came in. And uh, then my uncles decided they didn't want to compete and sold the business and the real estate and moved on. But that was always in my blood, so to speak. I started out in a corporate career and um, in 2001 actually built a restaurant in Eden Prairie. And I'd been developing a kind of a tax business on the side. And in 01, I went back full time into my entrepreneurial roots and haven't looked back. Um, I'm a CPA. I've also passed the CMA, as exciting as the CPA, but frankly, far more relevant. Uh, I've done graduate work at the U. I'm a 22 year season ticket holder at the barn, and we're having a good year. I'm very thankful for that this year. And I've completed about 14 courses towards my MDiv at uh, Bethel Seminary. And I'm passionate about emerging and small business. I'm an emerging and small business owner. I've started a number of businesses. I own a number of businesses. Uh, at our company, we offer accounting, payroll, uh, tax, planning, brokerage. I have a table in the back. If you come back there, um, you can have a fun pen if you'd like that. I also have um, these go on the back of your cell phone. This is kind of neat. Uh, they stick on the back. They protect against electronics. So if you're going to a Vikings game or meeting a friend for coffee or going to a health club and you just want to bring a license and a credit card, tuck those in here and back your cell phone and away you go. You can have one of those. Uh, we also own Keller Property Management. You may have heard the Keller name. We manage homeowner associations around the metro area. It's possible some of you might even live in a Keller Managed Association. And we have offices in Apple Valley and New Prague. I want to talk today, we're going to, we're going to talk about collaborative accounting. That's a term that I coined in 2013 as I thought about the next evolution of the accounting world. Uh, but it, it really came from the market perceptions about accounting. And I put in parentheses and law. We often tend to get lumped into the same bucket as lawyers. Um, I could tell a joke about accountants and lawyers, but I won't. And the, the market perception, number one, is that we're expensive. So if you're sitting here today and you're thinking about starting up a business or maybe you're already a small business owner, um, people tend to look and go, man, if I get, go to a CPA, it's really expensive. If I go to a lawyer, it's really expensive. I, I know I probably should, but I don't know that I can afford it. Secondly, we kind of view it as a pain in the fill in the blank, right? Accounting is that that necessary but not very useful thing that we have to do. Right? I got to fill out a tax form. I got to make sure I pay my sales tax. Uh, I don't want to run afoul of payroll tax because I've heard that's just a bad thing to do. Uh, and that's really about it. And that's, that's really kind of the perception that people have. Well, I agree. I'm a CPA and I agree with you. But that's because I'm a business owner. And I know what it's like to have to work with us. I know what it's like to have to uh, work with a lawyer. And, and there's some va very valid reasons for those perceptions. But as, as potential small business owners or small business owners, you need accurate and useful financials. These are important things. And I, I tell you that not as a CPA, but as somebody who employs people, who makes payroll, who has uh, a capital structure that includes some debt and some equity, 
and has banking relationships, uh, somebody who is always in potential acquisition discussions. These are very relevant types of things. We need them to, to control our business. And you know the control function is something more than just bookkeeping or booking transactions. It's having that measure of control, prevention of a calamity, prevention of theft, having a business that grows in a way that's profitable, you know, so that you don't wake up one day and say, man, my sales have increased, but my profit has gone down. Why is that? And you hear that all too often in small business market. Uh, we need to focus our attention on what needs it. So when you have good, accurate, useful financials, it will help point you to the things that you need to pay attention to. Uh, if you don't have timely or accurate financials and you, and you just view them as that kind of necessary but useless thing, then what are you paying attention to? You're probably paying attention to the things that naturally you're, you're strong at or that you're interested in, but some of the fundamentals to your business can sl slip away from you very easily. We need to be smart about our tax burden. At the end of my presentation, um, I am going to spend a few minutes talking about tax. Uh, a, I'm a CPA, but B, I think it's important just to give you a little bit of, of insight in, because we now know who won the election. I think there's some very important things that you as business owners need to be aware of. And then cash. How many of you have heard the term cash is king? Okay, is that true? It's true in my world. It's true in my world. Cash is absolutely king to emerging and small businesses. And I'll tell you what, I, I feel bad. I get, I get many new clients who come to me. They're referred to me by, by a current client or by a bank, and, and they're in a cash crunch. And now they're coming to me, but they're already in trouble, and they're trying to put, put a presentation together for a bank to get a loan or a credit line or they want to go out to, to and network with some of their friends uh, to try and raise some private money. And, you know, I'm happy to help them. And I, I enjoy helping small business owners. But when you invest in, in your financials, we, we don't want you to get to that place. Because cash pays for inventory, pay for payroll. We, we recently were recruiting a new property manager in, in our Keller business. And we saw a really good candidate, and, and I, don't, I know there's some realtors here, I met a few. Um, property managers are hard to come by, good ones. And so, you know, first question we asked this lady is, why are you here, <laughs> frankly? Why are you looking? And she said, because the last three paychecks that I got, the owner asked me to hold them a day or two. And, you know, I won't say the name of the company, some of you might know it. You don't want to get into that type of a situation, and it's very easy to have happen. So we want to keep our eye on the cash. So in, as, I, as I thought about our industry and the perception, we came up with this new way of, of doing accounting, so to speak. And, <coughs> and we call it collaborative accounting. If you go to our website, you'll see it right on our, our homepage. There's a, a blue hyperlink, and I'm going to show you a a diagram that you can you can get there and take a look at yourself. But you know, traditionally, hard to do business with. Uh, in the small business world, it's kind of like, you know, I, I give my accountant my stuff. How many of you have given your accountant your stuff? And you know, then your accountant works on it. When they can, then there's questions and there's back and forth. And then in April, you get your January results. Uh, the, or the manila folder gets passed. I mean, it's amazing to me how many manila folders and envelopes are still used. The digital age brought us this term. How many of you have heard the term accountant's copy? <coughs> you heard that term? Some of you are shaking your head. Those of you who use QuickBooks, uh, you can give your accountant an accountant's copy, and then they can go and make corrections, do things. Then they have to send that back to you. You have to successfully upload it back to your QuickBooks, uh, and a lot of mishaps happen. 
we host an enterprise version of QuickBooks. I call this grown-up QuickBooks. Um, many of you probably have heard of QuickBooks Online, which um, is about as entry level as it can get, and it's priced accordingly. There's not a lot of functionality there. This is a true version of QuickBooks that's affordable and, and at an enterprise level, and we host that. We create a secure VPN icon-based login on your device. So your device can be a desktop, a laptop, uh, and it's, it creates a secure tunnel to our server so that you know, it's just like you were clicking, clicking on your own QuickBooks logo and now you're in your software and your team is working or your uh, admin person's working. We define who does what and when. So we, we can offer a range of ways to work with clients. We have some clients who uh, prefer to do most of the transactions themselves and they have us do quarterly review they maybe use our payroll service because it integrates in, and maybe that's, that's it. We have other clients where we'll do the cash reconciliations each month, we'll do the quarterly review, we'll do the integrated payroll. Uh, we even pay approved invoices for clients. So we'll, we'll cut checks to their vendors and mail them out, and really a cost-effective solution. Uh, and we'll help you run your business and maintain focus on what you need to focus on. So this is a very different way about thinking about accounting. It, it's you and the accountant tethered together, real time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I and mean, kind of let that settle in. It, it is such a fundamental different way to do business. Um, and we avoid many of the, the pitfalls and pains. This is the diagram uh, for collaborative accounting. There's some more detail in here, but you know, we create a continuum between you and our team, and you know, that continuum can change. So that as your organization changes, maybe grows, gets in new lines of businesses, has new needs, we can tune the services that we we give you and offer you. So there's, there's no more manila envelopes being passed back and forth, no getting results three months later, no thumb, thumb drives going back and forth, no accountant copy mishaps, and no excuses not to meet. Um, this one I really like because we're, we're in it together. We're, we're collaborating and it isn't, oh man, I'm supposed to go to my accountant's office today and I didn't do my stuff, I didn't pull my bank statements together. I'll just call and say I'm sick. No one, you've, none of you have ever done that, right? You've, you've never, never done that. Uh, or, sad to say, sometimes it works the other way. The accountant's not ready because maybe it's tax season and uh, if they're short staffed or skinny staffed, their, their accounting goes to the wayside for two or three months. So, you know, they're begging off the meeting. You know, we're in this, we're in this together. It's a new way to think about accounting. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> um, I, I think this is, this is really important for small and e emerging business owners. And, you know, whether you work with us or not, I, I hope that, that what you see here is a different way to think about your relationship with your accountant. Um, it's a great, great way to challenge how you work with them. These are, these are tools and technologies and ways of approaching business that uh, really, frankly, are not new. They're not cutting edge, um, but to our industry they are because we're, we're an industry that by, by nature are skeptical and um, in, in many ways slow to change. And if you look at products like QuickBooks, for example, you know, wasn't, that wasn't brought to you by our industry. It, it created incredible change in our industry, but it was you know, brought to you by a, by a software company that had a different way of, of looking at the world. So I hope these ideas and these principles give you, give you some comfort. Um, to give you an idea, 
on collaborative accounting, you know, we can set up a, a hosted instance for you, integrate payroll, monthly cash reconciliations, quarterly reviews, all of those things. And believe it or not, we can do that for just several hundred dollars a month typically. Not always, sometimes it's more because of volumes uh, or the nature of the business. Maybe we have to have an hourly <coughs> billing component. But you know, it isn't, if I work with my accountants, it's gonna cost me thousands and thousands of dollars. You can have a business partner for really just a few hundred dollars investment every month. Okay, uh, any clarifications or anything from you? Yeah. How many staff do you have? 19 employees. On the tax? Yeah. Common side? Yeah. Anything else? All right, so I just wanted to give you a, a tax update since uh, we have a lot of emerging businesses here or small businesses. Uh, again, in, in my industry, we don't get caught up so much in who wins or who, you know, the election itself, but we kind of look at who wins and what are their policies. And we now know that there's a Republican majority in Congress. We have President-elect Trump. And there's some major changes that, that we believe are gonna hit. Now these haven't hit yet. Don't, don't walk out here saying this occurred, but we know the direction. And so knowing the direction, we can begin to plan. We know that we're probably going to end up with fewer tax brackets by the end of the year, okay? So from a planning standpoint, that, that means that your levels of income that kick you into the next bracket are gonna become that more, much more important to watch. They're gonna be broader tax brackets. Uh, there's gonna be lower tax rates for individuals than there are today. There's gonna be lower, much lower tax rates for corporations. Now, Trump has proposed a 15% tax, and the way that it's defined in their uh, position paper is from the largest multinational corporation down to the hairstylist who, who owns her own chair. That's pretty broad, broad spectrum, and that would touch all of us in this room. Fifth, I don't personally think he's gonna get 15%. Uh, actually, we know that the Republican Congress telegraphed 25% a couple days ago. That kind of makes me wonder if they're going to split the difference and end up at 20. But if you think about going from 40% down to 20, 25%. Now, Trump defined this as share-based corporations. So we need to see how that settles out. So for those of you who don't know, we I'm happy to talk with you about it after. Share-based corporation would be a C-corp or an S-corp. We do not know if, what that means for LLCs. But yet, they talk about the person who owns their stylist chair, which is probably an LLC. But think about the impact this would have if flow-through income goes down to that level. Now, all of a sudden your income tax rate is competing with your capital gains rate. You know, for the longest time, we wanted to shift income to long-term because capital gains was taxed at 20%. If income tax is at 20 or 25, now all of a sudden making money right now becomes a lot more tenable for people like us in this room uh, without, you know, shifting, okay, I'll sacrifice now and I'll, pay less taxes longer term. Um, keep an eye on the domestic production credit. If you have not uh, heard of the domestic production credit, shame on our industry, I think it's probably one of the most underused credits. Basically, it's a tax credit that, that applies to producing anything in the United States of America. Uh, so feel free to talk to me about that afterwards. I suspect that's going to get um, some improvement to it. I also think keep an eye on jobs credits. So I think 2017 is, is going to be a good time to be a business owner, starting a business, maybe adding an employer to. There's going to be some uh, incentives for employment. We're going to see a major impact on health insurance. Now, I'm not talking about 
insurance itself. That's, that's a given, right? I have the same struggles you do uh, in the health insurance market, but I'm talking about everything around it. So right now under Obamacare, we're used to, maybe some of you are used to a tax credit for small businesses. It's possible that could go away, which now impacts the net cost of insurance. Uh, we just got a clarification a week ago that small business or well any any business owner can reimburse employees towards the cost of their health care that was a huge decision um, that i think has a positive impact for business owners because instead of stepping in and you know offering an insurance plan which then carries all sorts of erisa implications you can you can say hey to your employees i'm just going to give you so much a month towards your health care and that's a valid deduction so we'll, we'll keep an eye on health insurance in minnesota and i'm sure you all heard this because you you, you follow it it's it's exciting stuff uh, minnesota just finally passed a law to sync up with the irs code um, we, we were actually out of sync as of a couple years ago and if you didn't, do not know this, the state is claiming that for, tho for those of you who filed 2015 tax returns, they're going to utilize their database and they're going to recalculate everybody's return and issue refunds to folks who should get them. I see some laughing, that's good, I laugh too. Um, <laughs> if you haven't heard this, talk to your accountant about it. Um, you should definitely have them do a checkup on your return to see if the things that were synced up match your return and have them and you keep an eye on it. Uh, not that I don't think the state will do their job, but it is the state. And then for those of you who don't know, I would say it's very likely we're going to get a health insurance rebate passed in Minnesota in 2017. Right now, the Republican, the, the Senate, and the House each have their own version, and Governor Dayton has his own version. That's the bad news. The good news is they all have a version. And uh, I suspect this will work somewhat like the property tax rebate. It's, um, it's really geared for people like us in this room. It's, it's for folks who had to go to the independent market and get insurance and you know had significant cost increases from 14 to 15, 15 to 16, and they want to give a rebate for people within a certain income range, and, and we're talking middle income, not, not uh, the low side. So this one, I think, is an important thing to keep your eye on. And that's it. Thank you. Can you talk just a little bit about the role of financials and, and the planning process? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I, I would encourage you, if you haven't yet, to, to read my article in, in the, this issue. Um, you know, financials to me are n not important because I'm a CPA, but because I'm a, a business person. One of the things that I talk about in the article is the balance sheet. The balance sheet is one that I think really differentiates uh, success in that I think I, I would bet everybody in here understands the concept on the income statement side of, you know, I have X amount coming in, I have X amount going out, and I want more coming in than going out. Uh, I do talk about some, some income statement type things in the article, but we tend to ignore the balance sheet. And I see this phenomenon, and I see it too much, of business owners who look like they make money and then they, they're going, but I don't know where it goes. Like I'm, I'm positive, but I don't know where my money's going. And that's where the balance sheet comes in. Because the balance sheet can claim a lot of cash. If you've got a, a business loan, the interest expense on your business loan goes through the income statement, but the principal you're paying back goes through the balance sheet. So you don't see that in your income statement. If you have to buy inventory, or you have to buy equipment, you have to, to invest in those types of things, those are balance sheet items 
that have a claim on your cash. Receivables is another area of, of planning. When somebody owes you money, that's cash that you don't have in the door yet. And so understanding your cash cycle and your receivables are really important. Everybody, I think, raised their head and said, cash is king and receivables are on the front line of that and that's a balance sheet item. Your financial statements really, I think, will help you understand, as I said, where to, to focus your attention. Um, again, most for most emerging business people, we're kind of looking at sales often. Maybe our, we'll look at our two biggest costs. Often that might be rent and payroll. And we don't pay attention to other things underneath. So, so let, me, let me give you a tangible example. In our property management business, we, use, we use, utilize a lot of supplies. It's a supplies-oriented business right now. And even, even with some of the, the technology changes that we're making in innovations, it's still very, very heavy. So we started looking at our supply costs on a, on a unit level. And what we found is that using our, we had a very high-end color digital copier. And we found that, that if we bought envelopes well, we could actually print our logo very nicely and run them through our color copier and we could create beautiful printed envelopes for five cents each versus buying them from a printer at buck 19. I mean, look, think about the cost difference there. There are hidden costs in your business that if you don't have good financials or pay attention to your financials, you're not gonna scrutinize as a business owner and, and get in there and find those cost saving opportunities or those ways of doing things differently. Uh, I also think that not paying attention to your financials stifles innovation. And so if you're planning to be successful in 2017, you don't want to be chasing cash. You don't want to be wondering where your money went. You want to be innovating. You want to be focused on your customer. Well, to do that, you, you have to have some key metrics that only come from your financial statements. So there's, there's more detail um, in the article. And, and again, I'm happy to, to answer some specifics to, to your situation after. Thank you. Thank you very much.